Welcome, dear friends, to Chanala, the fourth solo exhibition by Jonas Maas at our gallery. Chanala is an artificial world that not only brings together the words Chile and Panama, but actually intertwines them. I will try to explain what this has to do with the exhibits in a minute. But first, allow me to make a few introductory remarks about Jonas Maas. Maas lives and works in Düsseldorf. He completed his art studies as a student of Thomas Abts at the Düsseldorf Academy in 2014. However, we got to know him back in 2011 when he was sent by his then academy in Mainz, namely by his professor Winfried Wirnig, to the biennial exhibition Deutsche Kunststudenten stellen aus, in English, German art students exhibit at the Bundeskunsthalle in Bonn. After we had seen the exhibition, we met him in his Düsseldorf studio and after an extensive visit and conversation, he explained to us that he was not yet ready for a major solo exhibition, that he was still developing and would like to get in touch at a later point again. And that's what he did. Nine months later, he invited us back to his studio where he had created works for a complete exhibition. We showed him for the first time in late spring 2013, a good 10 years ago. I'm telling this story because it is so typical of the artist who works in a very concentrated, deliberate and careful manner. With him, nothing is left to chance and he doesn't put himself under any pressure, nor does he allow third parties to do so. The seriousness and uncompromising approach fascinated us 10 years ago and it still inspires me today. Today we are showing a series of new works that have been created over the last few months. As before, we are dealing with hybrid objects that can neither be clearly read as works in space, like sculptures or reliefs, nor as simple wall works or paintings. The abstract paintings are applied in acrylic paint on primed MDF panels. Sometimes Maas also uses lacquer, ink, pencil and other media. The panels often hang a few centimeters away from the wall and thus enter the room. In the pictures, we see geometric shapes such as diamonds, wafer thin stripes that have an op art effect a bit like Bridget Riley and wider stripes, rectangles and squares, etc. With his reduction to colors and shapes and his focus on structures, Maas positions himself in the tradition of concrete art. He does not want to depict the visible world, but rather bring colors, shapes, lines and materials into focus. In doing so, however, he disregards any examination of societal content as is attributed to concrete art and focuses strictly on the investigation of the constitutive conditions and possibilities of painting. And he does this with the greatest possible intensity, care and experimentation. Specifically, we are showing, among other works, a group of vertical and horizontal rectangular panels that are reminiscent of international flags and whose formation actually has its origins in them. Maas combines or interweaves the flags of Chile and Panama, or rather their color and form compositions, in his works untitled Chanala 1 and 2, which also became the title of the exhibition. It is not about painting national flags, nor is it about finding a contemporary form for the field of meaning opened up by Jasper Jones with his flags, or about pointing out historical and current conditions in the respective countries of the flags. It is simply a matter of creating new concrete compositions on the basis of the visual data of such flags. In this respect, the flags cited should only be seen as points of reference. In the case of the flag of North Macedonia, which shows a stylized sun, symbolizing the sun of freedom, Maas has transformed the original into a symbol for electrical energy, showing us the simple way in which visual moods, here the positive sun, there the electrified energy, can be conveyed with minimal intervention. However, Maas was not concerned with North Macedonia itself or the political conflicts within the country. Another example is the two flags of Belgium and Germany, to which Maas alludes with the colors he has chosen. Here, too, it is not an examination of the political conditions, but rather a misleading of us, the viewers. Although the colors of the flags are quoted more or less exactly, and there is also the horizontal and vertical arrangement as we note from the flags, in both cases, the order of the colors does not correspond to that of the flags. 
And in the case of the horizontally structured work, mass even introduces what one could read as elements of a face in the form of eyes and mouth, without being sure that this form of depiction is intended. The picture thus flips between abstract geometric composition and the face, and shows us in this way that even here uncertainty can be created on the part of the viewer with very little intervention. It is interesting to see how Jonas Maas develops his compositions in general and how the techniques he uses affect the composition. The starting point for some of the paintings are not drawn studies, but images that are developed on the computer using an image processing program. This allows Maas to work in different layers on the PC and to superimpose these layers on top of each other as a test or to work on and change the formations of the respective layers in isolation. In the case of the large vertical format work in light red, raspberry red and black, this is exactly the case. Two grids, each with square fields, are placed on top of each other, creating a chaos of overlapping areas out of what is actually a principle of order, sometimes still revealing the grid, sometimes showing new geometric looking fields. All of this was intensively prepared on the PC, and then made possible by masking. Mass deliberately accepted and provoked the fact that inaccuracies could occur during the masking process, so that the primer beneath the two grids shines through. It is yellow and sets the corresponding accent. In this vertical format work of medium size, an erasure is not only indicated on the level of the image motif. Instead, Maas erases the entire image carrier in X shapes and reveals the underlying layer in red, consisting of the inner frame carrier construction. The painting turns out to be a spatially multi-layered work, which also has two rounded corners and a yellow painted, approximately 3 cm thick side edge, and thus departs from the idea of a traditional rectangular panel painting in oil on canvas. In this work, Maas combines numerous layers that are brought together seemingly at random. On the one hand, we see shadowy repetitions of the elements of the wooden construction. On the other, shadowy sections of a portrait familiar to connoisseurs from the world of manga. And finally, and most prominently, thin stripes reminiscent of a barcode. Overall, it is a game of triggered but unfulfilled expectations. The viewer is repeatedly suggested knowledge and the possibility of knowledge and is immediately undermined. Only the lowest layer, the revealed carrier layer of the work, allows us to see through it, without, however, permitting insight in the broader sense. Perception is thrown back on itself, if you like, and is continued under new conditions. With this larger, vertical format work, Maas demonstrates his ability to subtly make systems and structures visible. Specifically, possibilities of color compositions are shown that are based on the grid and rules of the popular Sudoku puzzle. However, Maas does not play this game with numbers, but with colors. From global art history, viewers are naturally reminded of Gerhard Richter and his 2024 or 192 squares and similar works. But unlike Richter's work, Maas composition is not the result of chance and there are nowhere near as many colors as there are squares. Finally, the application of paint in this work by Maas is also completely different from that seen in the other works in the exhibition. Contrary to keeping the paint application and the mechanics of the application invisible to a certain extent, this is deliberately visible here. We see thinly applied, schematized brush stroke gestures that Maas has repeated in every field. In this way, he undermines what usually resonates with the visible brush stroke, for instance, dynamics, loss of control, emotion, and uses the brush stroke as a conscious gesture, like a quotation or sign for the aforementioned level of meaning that we otherwise associate with the brush stroke. What all the works have in common is that they not only function as an image on an image carrier, but also always enter the space and thus expand the painting into an object, into a relief. Maas thus differs significantly from what Frank Stella intended to do, who can perhaps be seen as the inventor of the shaped canvases. Stella explained in a famous interview in 1964 that he had chosen a somewhat deeper canvas construction, quote, to emphasize the surface, unquote. 
He then stressed, quote, it makes it more like a painting and less like an object by stressing the surface. I don't paint around the edge, end quote. One last aspect of the works in our exhibition, the occasionally appearing very special application of paint should also be mentioned. Some of the works, such as the large X, show zones carefully dapped with bold paint, as if the surface of the picture were a wood chip wallpaper. This is also a postmodern approach. Again, the visible brush stroke is not to be read as the result of a gestural, perhaps even emotionally driven painting style, but rather the extremely precisely worked fields of color with protruding noses of paint serve as a mirror of a deliberate distance to the other zones of these works, which are applied homogeneously across the surface. The show will be on view until January 20, 2024. From December 25, we will take a two-week winter break and the gallery will be closed. Before and after that, from January 9th, there will still be some time to see the exhibition. We will be pleased to see you soon. For the upcoming holidays, we wish you in these difficult times a relaxing and joyful break, if at all, wherever and however you celebrate. Thank you.